morning. Uh, we want to welcome everyone who's here, um, especially everyone. Everyone. Yes, here. Uh, There's a, a lot of places we could all be this morning. Everyone uh, has uh, many, many places you could be, and you're here. So welcome home. Uh, especially those who, uh, if you have a home church, especially if you're visiting us, you have a home church. Uh, welcome. And actually, if you have a home church and you go visit us, welcome. God bless you. Um, I actually was waiting for Brother Alex because we have you to give the welcome and opening prayer this morning. So can you just come and uh, open our service with prayer and, and, uh, and say a few words of your welcome to those who are here and those who are watching us online? God bless you this morning. Man. Good to be here. We were Saturday. We were uh, with the uh, ministers meeting up here in Phoenix at South Park in Tempe at the Double Tree uh, Conference Room. And it was very, very fruitful in that uh, people came. It was very good. Yeah. And we appreciate the effort that's been done. And uh, God was with us. It was very, very nice. It was just, it's good to meet with brothers and sisters. And uh, so we welcome you this morning. And uh, we'll go ahead and pray. If you'll stand with me for a little bit and uh, present ourselves for service. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning, Lord Jesus, for all yes, that you've done yes, for yes, us. Yes, exactly. Thank you for our, our ministers that made the effort to come all the way from Tennessee and other parts of the country. Yes, Those Lord. around the Arizona, Lord Jesus, we thank you. It's good to, to uh, acknowledge not only the ones that we already know, but the ministers that, were, that I've never seen before or even heard about them. There's, there's uh, a reciprocation here, Lord, and we know that, but we, we love the people, Lord Jesus, and it's not about giving a big shot or a little shot, it's just that, or big eyes or little use, and or, yeah. Lord, we, we love you, Lord Jesus. Yes. We know there's a time, there's a pressure yeah. on here. Yeah. Uh, this this thing about the virus, this COVID thing, this devil, that's gotten in the way, these hurdles that we can't go to our neighbors, we have to be six foot away, which is the number of man. It's a bunch of big bunch of baloney, Lord Jesus. Yes. But, uh, Lord, we, we love you, Lord Jesus. And we're so thankful that our hearts are burning and that we're regenerated. And yes. we're set a fire because of the fire we got from the ministers that ministered there at, the, at that meeting we had Saturday. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, because that's not the last one. We'll continue right. with that. And, and we're doing the same thing here this morning here in Tempe, Lord Jesus. We're an outreach ministry, and we're here to reach out, Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, and Lord, we're working on this end, and your Holy Spirit has been working on the other end. Amen. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray for everything, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let's sing that song. Uh, I think it's how about the screen at the cross, and we're just playing it. Amen. And uh, it if you're comfortable staying standing a little bit, that'll be fine. And Amen. feel free to sit down anytime you need to rest. Amen. Alas, and did my Savior bleed?
But John reminded me the other day that the Psalms are prayers, and the Jewish people they actually they they have a practice of of saying them, reading them out loud every day, and, and getting all, all 150 of them right. Um, and so um, I invite I invite us to consider like this as we're singing that we're we're singing a prayer. Yeah, that was a beautiful, yeah. beautiful one. And the next one is fill my way with love. So yeah. we should uh, wow. definitely, I, all of us could use some more love in our lives yeah. and, the, and, the, and the more love for the people in our lives. Yeah. Seems like it's really been um, not wow. so easy to love lately <laughs> or to experience <laughs> love. So um, and it's just what the world needs is a little bit more love, wow. right? Yeah, so, man. Let me walk, blessed Lord, in the way thou hast gone. Lead me straight to the land above. Give me cheer everywhere to the sad and the low. Fill my way every day with love. Fill my here uh, prayers requested for sister Ruth Chavez and also sister Victoria Cortez um, also for brother Joseph Castillo Garcia our cousin Joseph um, he's he's dealing with some physical uh, stuff with his arm and um, and also just you know the, the everything that goes along with being the social pastor of, of the church you know and so we're keeping the prayer um, also, Brother Joseph Garcia in Michigan, our cousin Joseph Garcia in Michigan, 
right. has been um, dealing with some, some physical symptoms also, and, and uh, just want to keep you in prayer, uh, all of them in prayer for, for everything that they might need. Um, <coughs> well, so we have prayer here uh, requested for Sister Grace Barunda, Adam Barunda, Zoe Barunda, Alex Barunda the third, and Gabriel Barunda. Amen. So just Amen. all of those, wow. uh, for all those family Amen. members in prayer, and of course everyone right. that just comes Amen. that comes to mind. Right. You know, we all want to lift them up in prayer. We just want to yes. unite our, ourselves to this morning you know, as a body of believers Amen. as we uh, raise that to prayer. So we please stand so we can also be ready with the to, to lift up the offering once we're ready, but. Brother Stella, if you can come and, and pray for us, please. <laughs> Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, yes, Lord. Lord, we come humbly before you, Lord Jesus. Yes. First acknowledging, Lord, there is no one else that we could go to, Lord Jesus, but to you, yes. Lord. You're Almighty God. You're the maker, the creator of our bodies, Lord, and the, the earth, the universe, Lord. Lord, you hold everything in the palm of your hand. As the disciples came and asked you, said, please teach us how to pray. It says, our Father who art in heaven, yeah. hallowed be thy name. Yes. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord Jesus. Lord, we understand that the daily bread is healing, Lord. And the healing belongs to the children, Lord Jesus. And we are your children, Lord. The scripture says daily bread, Lord. We need daily right. healing, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Every day that we wake up, our bodies need daily yeah. healing. Yeah. Our minds need yeah. daily yeah. healing, Lord. Yeah. Healing happens over a process of time, Lord yeah. Jesus. Yeah. We ask that you continue to heal our minds, Amen. our spirits, yeah. our souls, yeah. our bodies, Lord, our families, Lord. Amen. We ask that you heal the body of Christ, Lord Jesus. Yes, Each one of us are a member of, Lord. We are needing a healing touch, Lord Jesus. Lord, give us thy bread so that we may consume it and may it be processed through our body, Lord. And it may it touch every ailment, Lord Amen. Jesus, and heal us, Lord. We ask for that healing, Lord, and knowing that we're going to receive it, Lord. You said, ask. Ask of me. Until this time you have not asked of me. He says, ask in my name. Yes. And it shall be done. Yes. Lord, we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thy precious son, Lord Jesus, that Amen. you answer, Lord Jesus, that you give us what we have need of, Lord. Yes. Heal our bodies, Lord. Restore our families, Lord yes. Jesus. Lord, we ask for a portion of your Holy Spirit for more of it, Lord Jesus. Lord, bless everybody here, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you help our families, Lord. Yes. Lord. Bless the offering, Lord. Bless the cheerful giver, Lord, as we collect your the tithing and the offering, Lord Jesus. We ask yeah. it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Life behind the name. It's the life behind the name that makes the demons tremble. It's the life behind the name that makes the proud heart humble. It was God who devised the It's a life behind the 
Thanks, standing just for a little bit. Yeah. You can take a seat anytime you want. I just we're gonna be seated for a while, so um, yeah. we're gonna um, now at this time we're ready to. Are we ready yeah. to to yeah. call for Brother yeah. Ernie to bring us the word that's teaching this morning? Yeah. Yeah, you, you sound like you're ready. <laughs> maybe if, um, almost. Maybe maybe uh, look at your neighbor. Maybe greet your neighbor if you're comfortable shaking hands and everybody is in this, uh, there you go. Bump, elbow bump, fist bump, whatever works for you. Shake hands. Um, say I love you with your, with your eyes or say I love you with your with your mouth. Um, who, who knows what uh, hallelujah means? What does hallelujah Amen. mean? Amen. Praise be to our God. Yeah? Yes. Did he say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So we're going to ask Brother, yeah. uh, my daddy, um, Brother Ernie yeah. G. Barunda, to come and yeah. uh, bring us the teaching this morning, the lesson, the Bible teaching, as we yeah. sing the song, um, Open My Eyes, Lord. And let's yeah. just have that be our prayer. Uh, it's the, the, the word, the Bible, the message, it all becomes a whole, whole new book. When we have the revelation of Jesus yes. Christ, yes. So let's just pray for that. Open my eyes, oh, I want to see Jesus to reach out and touch. Genesis chapter 20, and uh, while well, we set up our PowerPoint presentation, and I turn on the re remote, or the little remote control, verse, I think it's verse uh, 7 of chapter 20, 20 verse 7, 
want to read it from my Bible. I do have the easy reading one, so it may be a little bit different from yours. Which is follows. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for you, and you shall live. And if you restore her not, know that you shall surely die, you and all that are yours. That's a very strong admonition, isn't it? You take it just from a very, very high level. That's God talking to Satan. Restore the bride back to her to her husband. If you don't do that, then you're going to die and all those that are yours. Very, very strong admonition. You may be seated. God bless you. We're talking on restoration. And um, uh, before I start, I'd like to read something. The young girl did not, did not um, sign her name. But it's one of these cards that you get sometimes. It's a thank you card from a little girl when I was teaching uh, history in one of the uh, Tempe schools here at Gilliman. Some of you may know the name of the school. Um, when I left, uh, I guess they made a big deal out of it and <laughs> different people, all well, things. And, and um, this is going to look self-serving to you. If, you wanna, if you're going to be looking at it that way, I'll just tell you it's not self-serving. Mm -hmm. But you may, I can't, I'm not going to convince you otherwise. But it may look self-serving to you. But something said to me this morning, read that. And I was sitting there, I go, well, I'm going to read that. And I, I put myself in her shoes. A little young girl that wrote this. And I don't know who she is. But if you knew how my office is all I'm in a big mess right now because from the move, you wonder, well, how did that get there? And I also thought, how did that get there? Mm. There's a box of, um, where we have boxes that go inside that box and then you take them out, piece by piece, they put them together, assemble them. And just on top of that box was this thing this morning there. And I don't remember putting it there. I don't know how I got there. Maybe when I pulled out a Bible, I don't know how I got there. So I read, I'm going to read it anyway. And if you, if you don't listen, you don't have to listen to the message that it says here. Just remember one thing I'm asking you to do. Sometime today, tonight, the next time you pray, like I said, I don't know who she is. Just pray for her. This is about seven years ago. In May, I think it'll be seven years ago. She was probably 11 years old, maybe 12. She would be about 20 or now. I don't know. So, kiss her, she go. You just go Barunda. <laughs> no, Mr. Barunda. Just, I just noticed it right now. Wow. Barunda, thank you for being my teacher this year. I have learned a lot from you. Smile at your face. You know, yeah. Yeah. Let's see the two dots. Wow. I'm going to miss you. My humor kicks in and says, well, maybe because she's a, not, she's a bad shot. She's going to miss me because she's a bad shot. <laughs> she's a bad sniper. I don't want to look for the sniper. I just want you to understand. It just... Thank you. Uh, I'm going to miss you. Thank you for not giving up on us. <laughs> Thank you for believing we can pass. Wow. You're a great teacher. I'll never forget you. You are the best. Don't let anyone tell you you are not. You're the best teacher ever. And I thank you for it all. All your hard work. Mm. So pray for her. It may have been the class that I taught where we were teaching eighth graders to get high school credit for Spanish. Mm -hmm. And they had to get at least 70% to, 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 to be able to get the high school credit. It may have been that class. I don't know. Maybe Crystal Eckert. I can remember. I remember her name. Yeah, young Anglo girl. Most of the Hispanics have, you know, they skated by seventy-five percent. You know, they, 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 they didn't work hard at it. But one girl, just she just worked her heart off. Crystal Eckert. With a K and eight K, maybe two K's. Who are she? She 
I had, and I almost budged for our grade, but I couldn't. It was 69.73 or something like that percent. She missed it by 200 something, something like a 20, 28 thousandths of a point. She just barely missed getting her high school credit, and she worked hard. I almost went in there, still got her new form or budgeted it. Just, I was in that. I was tempted to do that, but I didn't do that. And I told her, sorry, Crystal. She said, I understand this. She may have been the one that wrote this. I don't know. But pray for her. Oh, no, I got a, I got, I got several of these guys. And uh, but this one touched me. And uh, but God bless you. <laughs> what we want to do this morning is talk about restoration. And here's the subtitle this morning. It's uh, 10.33. Um, I thought it would be half an hour. Uh, I, don't want to. I just want to give you concepts. I don't understand. Then go read the book. My friend God says, you got to read the book. You have to read the book. Read, go back and read the Bible. And I'll give you enough people to read about. So you can study them and then read yourself into there. Well, how, what would I have done? Why did I do it different than them? Well, he's just as bad as I am. Yeah. But he's still the father of faith. Abraham. But different ones. And remember this. Read this with me. Just as title. This is the center portion. Uh, where it starts off with restoration. Read that with me nice and loud. Restoration, restoration is a four-stage four process. process. We talked about that last week. <clears throat> four, okay? uh, this is a review of last week. Last week, and when we introduced restoration, yeah. we saw, we looked at the law of contrast. Right. Remember that? Yes, sir. And then we looked at the good and the very good verse, verses in Genesis chapter 1. You might remember that. We know that the contrast, we know the contrast of how things were after the creation. In other words, man was left with the dominion over everything. Man was God of the earth. Yes, sir. You know, um, I'm going to say like on, on Grandpa Garcia used to say, he would fly with the eagles. Yeah. Uh, see, how many of you seen that, that crazy movie called The Matrix or something like that? Yes. Remember how at the end, Neo, Neo the new, the new yes. born man and the, the promised Messiah within the Matrix, he was flying. He used to be yes. flying. Because he was controlling the matrix. He was controlling the computer program. He was could do whatever he wanted in the program. If bullets came back and he'd just say, stop, you know, <laughs> storm could come up. <laughs> oh, Adam the wind would say, peace, be still. Yes. Stop the stop the wind. Adam could do that. Wow. So he was and then all these things are taken off of the original the original. Yeah. And, wow. uh, could swim with the wow. could swim yes, in the river. Wow. Uh, you know, wrestle with the, the bear, the tiger, and, you know, uh, whatever you want to do. He was, he was one of the buddies. He had a lot of buddies. And uh, we know that the contrast of how things were after the creation to how things are now in the world. You know, the kingdom of God is within us. We, there is no way uh, on earth. And the world would say well, there's no way in hell because we are in hell right now that the devil can take do something against us that God doesn't want us to have. But yet, until that's taken away from him, he yeah. still controls the element. But he has to get permission. Yes, that's right. Okay. That's right. Um, so we know the conscious kind of things were after the creation to right after the creation to how things are now in the world. And who was the God of the earth? At first, it was Adam. Adam. Man. Man. Who is the God of this evil age? Out there right now. The bad guy. Yes. Okay. Did or does the God, the, did or does that God, Lucifer, mm -hmm. Satan, the devil, depending how you're looking at him, you know, at what level do we surrender ourselves to the enemy? Why? Do we mm -hmm. surrender to him at the highest level? Which is the, the light, the false light, the, the greatest robbery they ever done, Brother Bam said, was done with false light. Yes. You know, and it's right now, it's happening right now. Yes. False light in the religious realm. Right. Uh, could even be just a little bit. You know? wow. uh, then, it, or do we surrender to him at the ad, ad, adversary level, mm -hmm. adversarial level, where he's an adversary, where he's ah, Satan, where he comes right at us, right one on one. You did that, huh? You know, or you talk to those women said they just walk around like ignoring, like you know. Yeah, you're right. You can ignore me. 
Or at what level do, do, we, do, we, do we surrender? At, at, or at the liar level, diabolos. That's a Greek word for liar. We talked about Satan's strategy, right? right. Uh, he's uh, three, the same guy, just a different way. Either really pretty and shows you all the nice stuff, talks a really good game, talks a good game. Right. Or he's adversary, he's a, your enemy, right? Boom, right at you. Hey, you have enemy, no, whatever. Do we surrender to him at that level? Right. Or do we surrender to him at, at the lying level, at the Diablos level, where he's actually right. lying to us? And we believe it. Mm. And we shouldn't because our ears are not garbage cans, right? Yes. We can say what we see, what we saw, what I sense this. But, you know, the guy's not, well, he's where he's at. If yeah. he's a Christian, he's walking, uh, let him walk in the light that he has. Amen. Okay? So, who is the God of the civil age? Did, or did that God have the power over the kingdoms of the world? Sure. Yes, he did. So, I told you, I'll give these two to you. All he has to do is fall down worship. And so, in fact, he had so much power that he showed the Son of God, the anointed Son of God, the Messiah, a mission. Past kingdoms, the present kingdoms, and the future kingdoms. Show them the United States. Yes. I'm going to say it like this. Give you an example of what I think he may have done. But, you know, we don't have no thoughts coming to us. Right? But I'll get you give you an idea. of his, He showed the power of the kingdoms of the world. So the mighty marching armies, yes. wow. and then the real, the big thing, he showed them possibly the atomic bombs, the power of the atomic bombs. Look at that! I we can control all this. Just like nobody will come against you if I have this power that I'll give to you if you will fall down worship. So he showed them visions. We're told that for the prophet. He showed them visions of the, of the United States and other other countries. So these countries, so now that's what Satan showed him, but then the scripture in Revelation 11, 15 says that though all those kingdoms that are now evil, filthy, and everything, they're going to revert back yeah. and now to the real, the king. Yeah. To the first man, the second Adam, say it like that, okay? Man. And there is a third Adam. You know, I, some brothers don't believe in that. I, 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 understand, I understand that. And we come from, you know, from our... Some of our minister brothers, they don't believe there's a third Adam, but there is a third Adam, but it's not the third man. It's the sheep. <laughs> the very one that fell, the sheep part. She was Adam, male and female. Yeah, amen. Who committed adultery? Yeah. Adam. Yes. Man. The yes. female part. Yes. That's the one that's got to be restored. Yes. The, the, the bride. Um. Anyway, uh, these kingdoms had to revert back to our Lord and His Christ. As the prophet of God says, we're, we're looked, waiting for another Adam. Not the male. It's the female. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. concepts in this concepts is, is there, there are a few of them. There are too many of them to give them justice today in one talk. But I just want to present them to you because this is stuff that we need to talk about right. here. And I'll tell you the truth. I'm so anxious. I feel like a little kid. Like I said yesterday to the to the brothers, I said, ah, since I first heard about these meetings, I, I've been feeling like a, a kid waiting for Christmas. You know? We've been waiting for a long time. Yeah. So brothers, how many of you said, how many of you know this is true that we've been waiting? I've been, we've been, I've been wanting this for a long time. And then about seven or eight brothers raised their hand. And said, yeah, yeah, this guy's psycho. Yeah. I've <laughs> um, been waiting for a long time for these meetings. But... We need to start doing a lot of groundwork, and that's what the, that's what nobody wants to work. Is right. Where it gets that's right. where the rubber meets the road, so to yes. speak. Yes. Where it gets down and dirty. Yes. What, what, do you, what do you call that? Um, oh, not wholesale, retail, retail. Re, it has to be retail um, evangelism. Mm. One customer at a time. Yes. It's easy to sell wholesale, right? Yeah. <laughs> wholesale. Just get up get on the internet. Oh, we're talking to the look at the world. We're, we're, we're talking to the whole world. Why? A bunch of baloney. Yeah. That's a bunch of baloney. Yes. That's good. You only you only know how many people you're reaching by your subscribers or the people that say, Oh, we like you, you know. Yeah. Well, maybe one out of ten says we like you. In other words, just that we they don't like you, they don't look watch you, they don't see you again. So we never know who's really seeing us. But one on one, if that's where that's yes. where it gets yes. time consuming. Yes. Uh, 
And that's what we don't want to do because we have our time is precious. It's my time. <laughs> when did, when since when you became a Christian, when was your time your time? Ah. When was it? I want some me time. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? When you're living for others is eternal life. Amen. Living for us is say it with me. Living, living for, for others, others is eternal life. Eternal life. Say it after me then. Living, living for others is eternal, is eternal life. life. Thank you. Yeah. So if you're living for yourself, then uh, but if you're living for others, then that's eternal life. Amen. Or you're manifesting eternal life. Okay. Um, I didn't mean to get into all this. Why am I talking about this stuff for? Anyway, ten, okay. Restoration is the four stage process. Say that with me. Restoration, Restoration is the is four, four stage process. process. Okay. Uh, but Brother Ernie, four, number the the number four is an earthly number. Yes, it's an earthly number. Yes. That's where restoration <laughs> takes place. Yes. It's, yes. it's also a number of deliverance. Yes. yes. Right. And it's yes. also a number of restoration. Yes. Yes. Right. So restoration for state process, and then we have examples. We stu we studied these already here for since probably since um, village, a village of Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn. Oh, I'll keep village. Holiday Inn. <laughs> then we went to Best Western, right? We talked about these concepts over there. Uh, to temple in heaven, it was three plus one, right? Because you have the justification, the outer court. Then you had the holy place. And then you have the holy of holies. But that just sets the scenario. And then it's not it's not really a temple <clears throat> until the the main one, everything's in place. It's not a, not really there, fulfilled until the fourth thing takes place, and that's when he says go. You can be justified, sanctified, raised new birth. It's okay, but yeah. what we really want is him inside. Yeah. Yeah. And Brother Bam said, yeah. Brother Bernie preached to us one time, he said, he read that part where Brother Bam says, watch his approach. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thank you, Lord. Watch his approach. Right. You know, I've been justified. Right. <laughs> Spoken correctly, but wrong. I've been sanctified. Spoken correctly, but wrong. Or for example, let's say like this, I am justified. I am sanctified. Mm. I have the new birth. Mm. It's all wrong. Mm. Our perception is wrong. Yes. That's not wrong. Mm. But it could be better. I'll say it like that. Yes. Okay, let's say it like that. Yes. It could be better. Yes. Because he said, watch his approach. So when you lose, sister, when you lose a nice glass, a crystal glass, and it's your favorite, and what happened to it? Well, Benjamin got a hold of it, and he started banging in the backyard, and he got full of mud. You, you see what I'm saying? You, you know where I'm going to now? And then you walk out to the backyard, and you go, oh, there it is. I used to love drinking coffee or or sipping um, tajarin, maharin, what is that? Tajini, what is it? <laughs> Tamanito, something like that, okay. Um, I, I used to love to drink from that. Now, be, you're, now raise it up a million, zillion times higher, and that is God finding that vessel. Oh, oh, I found my glorious. Yeah. Oh. And the vessel's all filthy. It's, it's, it's doing good, right? It's got an eight to five job. I'm not talking this about brothers that no, It's got an eight to five job. It's got a nice BMW, right? Um, Got a nice big BMW, and it's got a nice car. It's got his four hundred one k. Everything, everything's all sad. And then all of a sudden, he says, "Wow, well, I got it made." My you know, yes. like a rich and ruler, right? Yeah. I've got all these, all these things are. I got all my warehouses full, and all my savings account are full, and all my this is full. And I've got my zero credit. I, I've got all my credit cards up to zero. I can do whatever I want. Travel, and then all of a sudden, someone says. Today you're gonna to die. Said, no, no, I don't want to die. And right, you know, I'm making him. Yeah. Maybe that's too morbid for you. But he has everything made. But then something tells him. He goes, I'm gonna go there. Wow. And something says you're lost. Why? What good did all that do him? Right. Nothing. It's worthless, right? 
But at some point, the person says, I'm, I'm no good. You realize I'm no good. And then that's when God comes reaching down and gets him. Ah. That's, he justifies us. Yes. Because yeah. right? it's his approach. Yeah. What is ah. his goal? What is his goal? It's to get that vessel, clean it up and everything. Like I said last Sunday, uh, sanitize, sanitize it, uh, sanitize it, uh, purify it, and yes. stigmatize it, the whole thing, right? Yes. He wants to clean it from it because he, he wants to drink from it there. Why? So he gets it. Well, the moment he picks it up, it's just as filthy as filthy can be. Yeah, I, the, the, like the, the Samaritan woman, uh, she's coming to, the, the scene was Jesus coming up to the well and He's, this is the reality. The reality is Jesus sits there. He's the son of God, God incarnate, the Messiah. That's the reality. And the reality, when she's coming here to the well, she's a, she's a prostitute. And she's, Brother Ben, one of the places she says, she comes to there thinking of what she did that night. Wow. Or that last day, that last night. Last night. And she knows she's in, she's in a filthy condition. But then she, she doesn't go into, she goes into her COVID mode, I'll say it like that. Mm. Oh, you don't have your mask on. Huh. <laughs> Why? You were drinking that soda pop and look at that can you dropped, you dropped it there on the floor. You didn't recycle it. Why? How silly is that? How stupid is that? Pardon my French. How stupid is that for us to be thinking about things like that when there's something higher, something higher level at stake, which is mm. the spirituality. The battle that we're really, really in. Yeah. Good versus Satan. God versus Satan. Wisdom versus faith. Yeah. You know. Um, Christianity versus idolatry. Yeah. That's those are real battles. Those are those are the real battles that we're in. We're not in this, oh, did you you didn't even wash your car today? <laughs> you got a car. Look how filthy your car looks. How <laughs> trivial is that? Please help me. Understand me. Please help me. I'll, how absurd that is. And but she comes to there and what does she see? She goes, she sees the Jew. The church. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Whatever she is. That's the, the, the that's her perception. I see I see. And she says, maybe with a little bit of an accent, Jewish accent. She's she's got the Jewish accent, but from the north. And he's from the south, right? Ah, really? When you think about yeah. it. Yeah, uh, Israel north and, and Judah was in the yeah. south. Yeah. And so she, and he was actually from Nazareth, which is, you know, happy between them. So he picked up a Nazarene, maybe a Nazarene accent, a little bit of combination. But anyway, he says to her, uh, ask, you know, don't give me a glass of water. <laughs> he says, how, how dare you, being a Jew, talk to me, I'm a Samaritan. We don't get along. <laughs> Her first, her first perception is that's a perception. Right. Her first thought is a racial thing. Israel, yeah, yes. you're, you're a Jew. I'm a, I'm a Samaritan. <laughs> yes. And then she says to everybody, "He knew who you were talking to." That's right. Yes. He, he's, yes. he, he, uh, mm -hmm. he makes it an exception of himself. He makes himself exceptional. All sure. Sure. He said, "If you only knew who you were talking to, <laughs> then you'd ask me him for water." And she, so she thinks, oh, I wonder how I wonder how good he, how big a guy he is. You know? We talked about this before, right? Ah. Um, long time ago. Yes. About the, the perception versus reality. Mm -hmm. And so she says to him, Oh, how great are you? Ah. But she says it like this, Are you greater than Jacob who gave us to us? You know, how, what degree of greatness are you? Where are you at? Yeah. And so, well. It says, uh, if you drink from this water, you're going to thirst, but I have water that you haven't even heard about. Yes. Wow, this this guy's a professor. <laughs> brother, brother Alex and Brother Stephen said, yeah, I don't see any patches, but he sounds like a professor. He's talking to me in these ethereal, you know, metaphysical terms. Wow, water. Yes, I want water. And then the conversation goes on. And then he catches that she's this thirsty. And he says, okay, go get your husband. Yes. Wow. Man. It was not a surprise to him culturally now. He goes to the root of the matter. He, he goes to the root of the matter and he says, this is not morning. 
and this is not an evening, so therefore you are not a virgin, or you're not a clean woman. But he gives her like a compliment. He didn't say, go get your John. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't say, go come and bring me your last customer you had last night. He said, go get your husband. Yes. He says, you know I don't have one. I don't have one. My. So that's right. He's told me the truth. So you got five. Then he goes into his prophet mode. And then that's what she says. Wow, you're not just a Jew. You're not just a great man. You're not just a philosopher. You're a prophet. Man. And then the prophet of God tells us, what is she trying to do when she just recognizes him a prophet? She tries to have a theological debate. Yes. <laughs> That's what the prophet says. He said, well, you guys worship in Jerusalem and worship in this mountain. And, you know, who's right? Who's wrong? And he, and he, and he confirms, if you look at the scripture there, in that John 4, I think it is, he confirms his office prophet three times. Wow. He tells, tells her, deserves her yes. situation. And then he says, Verily I say unto you, and the day cometh, and then verily I say unto you. This is the three times he verifies. And then she, so she starts thinking, could this be the Messiah? How do we know that? Well, how do we know what her thoughts is because of her words? Her words say, a word is a thought expressed, right? Yes. So her thoughts was about the Messiah. Because she said, are you, you know, when the Messiah comes, he's going to tell us this thing that you're telling us. Yes. Wow. I think you're the Messiah, but you wow. got to tell me yes or no. And she says, I am the best of the Amen. <laughs> My. So what a beautiful thing. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. That, that the Lord Jesus Christ will do that. And we think about that. Let's, let's, let's come back to the tabernacle in the wilderness now. It was, Moses was told to build it just like Oh, I'm sorry. This is just the concepts. I got into the elaboration. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. We, okay, the te the thoughts are, concepts are temple of the world and, and heaven, tabernacle in the wilderness, three plus one. Man's, which is God's temple. Man. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's the cup, right? We're, we want to be cleaned up. And that's the process of Brother Bernie was brought us to our attention right there in, in uh in the Revelation of Jesus Christ book. Watch God's process. He's the one that's justifying us. He, you know, it's, he, he, it's like what Alex is talking about. It takes you by the hand. Yes. Okay, come on, let's, let's, go, let's go through justification process. And then he takes you to the sanctification process. It's him. Uh, you don't want to say, I'm, I'm, I'm justified. <laughs> you, you justified me. Thank you. And then, oh, now you're cleansing me. Oh, thank you. Because it is self-serving for him. Why? He wants to be in us. Not just to be with us. No. That's to be all over us, like he was with the no. Jews, right? And then he was, you know, above us, right? Then he was with us, with Jesus, and then now he's inside us in the in Pentecost forward, right? Yes? No. So he wants, that's that's his problem. That's, he, if you want to say he's selfish, yes, he's selfish. But what is the quotes we gave to you last yesterday? What is his ultimate sharing? He wants to share eternal life with us. That's, that was the last quote. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Look, look at the quotes that we handed out yesterday. Anyway, so the church, the tree, that's a three plus one process also. Justification, sanctification. The baptism of the Holy Ghost in the form of the new birth. And then the hard part. Ow! <laughs> Obedience takes the adoption. Okay? Right. So now, this, you see, um, maybe I stayed too long on that slide. Sister, um, let me go, go to this. Okay, thank you, sister. Today's concepts, uh, that's another part. This is restoration, the four stage process, right? It's God's approach to full restoration or rest. <laughs> we'll get it that way. The restoration, three plus one. Abraham, we see the three things there. We're going to see quickly um, the patriarchs, the three plus one process, the body. The process three plus one. Yeah. Uh, Elijah, two appearances of Elijah wow. and the seven church changes to Israel. Uh, Elijah introduces the lamb away at the top there. 
And then the rest, the other one, that's the Jewish part, then the restoration of the Gentile bride goes through the very same processes, process, okay? Okay, now our scriptures very quickly now, and Joel, I'll read it from here, so I don't have to look for my Bible. Um, I'll read it from the Bible. It's a little bit clearer, maybe, because I have the easy reading. 1, verses 1 through 4, Joel 1. The word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Pethuel, Pethuel. Hear this, old man, and give ear all the inhabitants of the land. Has this been in our days or even in the days of your fathers? Let, let me share something with you that I learned recently in the Bible, read the Bible, in, in uh, verse 2. Um, I did see that almost 80% of the questions that God asks are rhetorical. What does that mean? It's actually a statement disguised as a, as a, as a, as a section, this, a statement disguised as a question. Okay? So if you look at that question, it's really a statement. And I'm going to change it to like this without adding it to it, taking it from the Bible, letting you know what it's really, what it's saying to me, okay? It says, hear this, old man, and give ear all the inhabitants of the land. This has been in your days and even in the days of your fathers. It's a statement. But then he says, is it or did it? Yes. The answer, uh, anybody's reading says, yeah, that's right. Has this taken, yeah, that has taken place. Okay, so tell the truth, tell ye your children and of it, and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. And this is the part of a restoration law. That which the Pomeroon had uh, left at the locust eaten, and that which the locust had left the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm had left the caterpillar eaten, same insect to go to the original. It's the same yeah. insect, yeah. just in different stages. Okay. Right. And verse and Joel 2, 25 and 26. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And then we read this already, I believe, uh, Genesis 20, verse 7, about Abraham and Sarah and Abimelech. Now, here's a scripture that it's not touched on very much. Even the charismatics don't like to talk about it. Uh, but this is even in the message. The charismatics in the message, okay? Why? Repent ye therefore and be converted, and that your sins may not may be blotted out when the times of, re of refreshing shall come from the presence of yes. the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which yes. was before preached unto you, yes. whom the heaven must receive until the restitution of all things. Which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. That's Acts 3, 19-21. We, we're going to go quickly through the, the definition. Uh, definition of restore. And we'll go quickly there is to give back. Something was taken away. Bring back to a former normal condition. Okay, as by repairing, rebuilding, altering, etc. To put a person back in place or position or rank. That's awesome. That's the church is going to go back into that position. Like I said last Sunday. Prophet God tells us right now you pray for the blind and the deaf and everything, but then you're going to command it. Yes. Open your eyes. Then open your ears. Right. There's something coming. Right. Prophet God said it's not going to last very long. Right. No, it's not going to last very long. No, but she said, well, church, I'm going to call you aside. And we'll, we'll get to that if we get a chance later on. Okay, we'll read those quotes. Make the restitution of the. Um, to bring back to health, strength, etc. Now, today I was challenged to say something, and I'm going to try and say it very nicely without sounding like I'm scolding anybody. I'm going to say it like this crude, a little bit crude, but it's not, I don't mean to be crude. It's when are we going to start believing God's word? By his stripes we were healed. Amen. That's either a statement of truth or fact. Let every man's word be a lie, but mine be true. Amen. So we make God a liar by saying, oh, I'm sick today. I have this disease. 
Amen. We should start thanking him and saying, God healed me already. He already yes. healed me on the day of Calvary. Yes. Uh, I just don't have the faith to accept my healing. Well, accept it. Why not? Then we're talking the truth. Okay, now let's get to the, 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 the real matter. And why do you not, why can't you accept your healing? You can confess it. Lord have mercy. To bring back to health. John Ryan yeah. walked around yelling, I'm healed, you know, yes. I'm healed. Yes. I'm, I can see, I'm, thank God for healing me. Thank God for healing me. Amen. He was blind, yes. still blind. But he was already been healed a thousand yes. years ago. He went, he went back in the prayer lines, Brother Brown, can you help me out here? Yes. You said I was going to see, I'm healed. Can you give me a scripture? By his touch, we were healed. You are healed. You just can't see. Yes. <laughs> you know, and remember, Brother Brown says, <laughs> That if you confess it, yes. like the, we talked about the adopted child. How many remember the adopted child? Yes. Yeah, you accept adopt the child, yes. and then eventually you'll get pregnant and have a baby. But you have to say it. It's it's like what the world calls it, almost like that. Fake it till you make it. It's not that, <laughs> but it's not that. Wow. They just have a wrong a slide on it. You say it until you you say it here until it drops down into a yes. revelation. Then all of a sudden. And when he, the last time when he said, I can see, ah. you know, he said it right, he said it at the right time. Yes. Just say the right word. You know, she's, remember the Yancey Brothers? The Yancey, the song of the Yancey Brothers? About Sister Hattie Wright. She said the right word. Right. Yeah. yeah, we have to say the right Amen. word. We have to say the right word. I am healed. Amen. But what about your blood level? I don't care. I'm healed. Amen. Amen. He already paid for my healing. I just have the symptoms of that. What about your insanity? Or, or, you know, God's going to heal my insanity someday. Yeah. <laughs> to bring back it to use. When are we going to be restored to our, our place? But when are we going to do what God told us to do? The first com the Great Commission, this other thing, that other thing. We need to be restored to that and do it. And that's that's what we call retail evangelism, so to speak. Okay? Etymology restored to give back, to build up again, to repair, from uh, to repair, rebuild, renew from, and re re rebuild, and renew again, and from those words. Okay. Restore again to set up, establish, renew, restore. Restitution, the restitution of all things. The same word is restoration. One is in Hebrew, one is in Greek. And to re a restoring of. To set up again, restore, rebuild, replace, revive, reinstate, reestablish from re again and statue, whatever that word is, to set up. Okay. Definition of restitution to give back to the rightful owner. Yeah, Jesus said that. The just shall inherit the earth. The, the, the meek shall inherit the earth. Right? The meek, say it with me. The meek shall inherit the earth. So, give back to the rightful owner. Yes. Making good for loss or damage, reimbursement, a return to a former condition or situation. That's what you have to, the law of contracts, I wanted to get that across so that we could see that, what, how it was, what is it like now? It's going to be like it was before. Well, a few modifications, we're not going to walk around naked, then we're going to be robed in the righteousness of the Lord yes. Jesus Christ. White robes. Okay. The disciples asked, Jesus, why did the, the scribes say that lie must first come? They knew, they knew what was going on. They knew what, what was waiting. They knew what was coming. Why? Any Jew could start off from the back to the front and read what was the last, who are the last two prophets that are mentioned in the Old Testament? Malachi and Malachi. It's verse 4. It's remember the law of my servant Moses. So this he's reminding him, remember the law, the law. Of my servant Moses and Elijah. Behold, I will send you Elijah. So they knew that light was coming. Restitution, that's the etymology. Look it up in the etymology, etymonline.com. Restitution, there's a definition. Again, it's the same thing as restoration. So, restoration of four stage process. I said I wouldn't take them half an hour, you know, I'm already low of half an hour. But let's go quickly for here. Read this with me, please. Four messengers of death kill the tree with dogmas. Four messengers of life restore the tree because God said, I will restore it. 
is going to destroy how? How? Four death messengers killed him. Therefore, four live messengers will destroy him. What was the first? Martin Luther, justification. What was the second? John Wesley to the second justification. What was the third? Pentecost for the restoration of the gifts, the Holy Ghost baptism, the Holy Ghost. What was the fourth? The word. The word. The word. There were four great prophets, four messengers of righteousness, restore her back again. Isn't that beautiful? So in heaven we see this right there. We're talking about justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost represented as, as the outer court, holy place of holy holies, but it's not completely, it's not being used yet. Until what? Until he sits down in his throne. Yeah. And everybody starts yelling, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Right? Yes. That all those things that are taking place. Who serve, uh, he goes 8 5, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, or see, he said, Eve, see that thou makest all things. According to the pattern, show the mount. God took him into heaven, let him see a glimpse of heaven, and, see. and even the prophet God says, "I think it whole, looks a whole lot like that, don't you? Just like Moses made it on earth, made it in heaven." Okay. Now, notice, this is what the prophet said. Let's look at this. Now, if you notice, Solomon never varied one bit from the pattern that Moses saw on Mount Sinai in heaven. Moses, when he returned from his vision, pitched the tent and made it just exactly like he saw in heaven. And when Solomon built the temple, he made it just exactly the way he seen the pattern, the type. Moses pitched the tent for a perpetual type because it was moved from place to place. But Solomon, he made the tabernacle just exactly in the fashion that Moses had seen in heaven. It was all but together, set in order, just exactly. Except the difference though, was the uh, Holy of Holies was just a little simple, maybe an eight angels, about this high, something like this, just looking over the, the mercy sheet, right? And now, when Solomon builds it, I think it makes him close to like 20 feet tall, something like that, six cubits high. I don't remember oh, exactly. Almost called um, Boaz, and it almost called, I forget the other name of the other pillar, or the other angel, right? Anyway, man, what is man? God's temple. Is that correct, yes or no? Yes. Yes, of course. First Corinthians 3, 6, you know you not that you are the temple of God? Right. Verse, chapter uh, 6, verse 19. What, know ye not that your body is a temple of the, of the Holy Ghost? And our, our, our brother, Brother Alex, has been telling us over and over again about this scripture right here. First, first Thessalonians 5, 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy, right? That your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then what happens after you have the body uh, correctly? Now, how did the prophet say it at uh, the greatest battle I ever fought? I think he says, when you can get all those flus cleaned out, right? Yes. What do you have then? A solar system. What is a solar system? You got a sun. And then orbiting around the sun, yes. is, you have this. Like I said, now, now, you have, now you have the real you sealed off, right? And then now you have your, and then you have your spirit around there. And then you have your your uh, your soul. <laughs> He's inside your soul now. He's inside your soul. First, that's Ezekiel thirty six twenty seven. Then I will give you my spirit. my spirit. After you have this, this I'll have. Then I'll pour my spirit in, inside. So now you have spirit his, him inside your soul, and your soul, you're the son, S O N S U N. And then you have a, a, a the spirit going around, right? Yes. And then you have the body, the, the planet physical thing going around. So, yeah. What did he say? We have all these things ready? He said, now you have a solar system. That's what he said. That's why that's, you want to see, uh, you want to hear an awesome tape to explain a little bit about that? 1954, I think it is. Uh, why I am a holy roller. Preaching in Chicago, 1954. Oh, I'm holy roller. Yeah, I'm not going to listen to that. Oh, he's just going to be a holy roller. He's going to be a holy roller. Yeah. Uh, so I already know what he's going to say there. Check it out. It's, it, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. So, so then, the, then the church, the church goes through the justification process through Luther, yes or no? Yes. yes. Goes through sanctification with, with Wesley, yes, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Goes through the new birth and the restoration of the gift under the Pentecostals? Yes. Yes. Right. 
But then, is that it? Wow. No, three plus one, the word. Okay, read this with me. I think we're done now. There's a lot of information here. I know some of you are nodding off a little bit. That's okay. They just gotta, have, gotta go home and do your homework now. <laughs> read, read the book, like Brother Alex said. You know, or we can just take off, like you know, start running. Where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, heard that story about Brother Brother Bernie talked about. It. He's trying to give an example of how the the, the Brazilians are. Mm -hmm. Nobody heard that story. Remember that story? He's walking along by the banks of the river, this guy, Brazilian brother. And then he says, João, João, tua mulher está afogando. John, John, your wife is drowning. What? João, João, your, your, your wife is drowning. And he takes off his shoes quickly, put off his shirt, and starts running and dives into the water and starts swimming. And he goes, what, what, João? <laughs> your wife is drowning. And he starts slow, swimming slower and slower because he said, well, I'm not married. <laughs> then he gets a few yards from the lady that's drowning. I'm not married. And besides, my name's not even John. So maybe he goes back and just right to the, there's a lady drowned. You know. Do we want to just take off running and just running without a message? In other words? Or do we really want to find that? Are we really in the message or not? Yeah. And not I'm sharing with it. We, we, we got to take it's word by word, every word. Brother Bram says in the simplicity of God, I think it's in the simplicity when he's preaching the shields, he says, weigh every word. And it's hard. It's hard to weigh every word. Because you gotta, what does that word really mean? Oh, why do you go to etymology? I'm trying to weigh every word. What am I really looking at? What is the prophet of God really telling us? What is the Bible really telling me? That's why I go to etymology. Maybe it's not for everybody, but I do that. And that's my my uh, burden, right? Because that's I know I should do that, so I go ahead and do it. Some people don't have to do that. Well, that's okay. It's, you know they don't have to, but somebody's got to do it. Self serving or eat. No, pray for her. Okay, but there are four messengers of death, four messengers of life, yes. and that, and what is the, this is the most important thing because we're gonna go from here on out. Remember when I remember me mentioning about Christmas. Earlier, I really, really want to get into Joel chapter 2, the first 11 verses, first 10 or 11 verses. I want to get into that. And then you, the, you may say, Well, what, how'd you get that from what we just talked about? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is, this is, this is it. My great army. It's beautiful. Um, so here we have um, four. Let's look at them quickly. In Abraham's life, you have, we talked about this already, remember that? The justification yeah. is in Genesis 12. Sanctification is in 15. Genesis is 17. Brother Brown calls him the model servant, the model believer. So that we have to take that as a model. What does a model mean? It's like, he's gonna make the other ones just like that, right? Genesis 17 is a new bird. Remember, he, he calls him a baby, right? What does he do in verse, in chapter 17? El something or other. Should I? El should I? Right. Says, come and nurse me. I know Brother Man's won't face this. I know you're just a baby. 99 years old, but just a baby right now. Come and nurse for me. And get some strength. You got enough strength to get married, have a baby, and have, get married and have get married again and have seven kids later on. That's why the body said the Bible says he was the body was already dead. The, the wow. nourishing, yeah. nursing off of El Shaddai. The right. foundation. This is where we have to draw, put a comma and read between the lines and not recognize that every scripture has a compound meaning. Yes. But, but, but Brother Ben just said that's faith, uh, love, yes. grace, and perfection. Right. But bring it to the four. Bring it to the justification, sanctification, back. It hits perfectly in line. Okay, huh? Abraham was the father of faith, right? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Justification. Isaac was, he was going to be sacrificed, right? And he was, his actually blood cell that came from Abraham's body. Yes, yes. or no? The blood. Jacob, name is changed. New way, a new, a new name, new way of walking, new relationship with his brothers. Yes. Everything's new for Jacob. Okay? New birth. And then Joseph is a perfection. He even gets adopted where? 
He doesn't get adopted in, in, in Canaanite. He gets adopted in Egypt. And it's hard for him. He goes all the way from a prison all the way up to yeah. right hand man of Pharaoh. Is that right? So, and that's where they have the Egypts. That, that's where they have they have the pyramids is in Egypt. And the just simplicity so God can show us, let us see what's going on. The number three, the body. Now remember, that's the foundation for the for the Old Testament uh, church and the seven church ages for Israel. The prophet tells us that the body was the comprised of the prophets. And then you hear at the at somewhere around the, the their Thyatira, you have God telling the Gentile church, so it's gonna be a parallel to the Israel's church. He says, I have one thing against you that you have that woman Jezebel seduce my servants to make to commit fornication. Is that two fourteen, something like that of Revelation? I have that as one thing against you. The Yolaha would have called herself a prophetess. So somewhere, and then who, who resisted Jezebel was Elijah. So there are two appearances of Elijah. The brother Bam says, uh, I'm talking about, I've got 700. He says, Elijah was a star of his age. What does star mean? He's a messenger. So he was a star of that age where Jezebel was there. Okay, so he appears twice. Okay, he appears in, in their Thyatira, I'll call it like that. And then he appears over here, when? At the headstone part. Where now he's the what Brother Brown called John the Baptist, a keystone that connects the old and the new. Yeah. Way at the top, right? The arch, Brother Alice knows about that. There's a keystone that locks everything in. Yeah. That's John the Baptist. He introduces the life. And our Elijah will, pre will present the will present the bride to Christ at his appearing. Where does that come from? <laughs> you have to read the book. That's in uh, pick up the pen and write. Amen. Read that, read that, read that. Just right. we, we've, we've given it as homework. Amen. We need for you to read it. So when we say something like this, you'll understand the thing. I said, well, it wasn't, it wasn't the time, the waiting wasn't on, on the part of Moses. It was the part of the people for them to start calling uh, for the bread of life. Well, where does that come from, Brother Ernie? Well, you already read it. You already read it. It's in, from the pick of the pen and write. It's, in, it's, it's, a, it's awesome. Uh, I prescribed it to a brother last night, a pastor. You know, he was saying, well, I don't know. Well, you know, I'm, I'm stuck where I... Last two days, I've been seeking the Lord, and I don't have anything to talk about. Wow. Nothing's been inspired to me. He could talk about anything, right? Mm -hmm. He's a mighty, prop, mighty tremendous preacher. So when I preach something, he gets me. I'm, I'm boom, I'm there. But right now, nothing's coming. I said, brother, can I give you a prescription? He said, yeah. He said, Read, pick up the pen and write. Something from there's going to pop out. There are about 35 mm -hmm. to 50 topics in there. Like something's going to ignite you. And it's like, whoa, that's from the Lord. And not from right. Brother Ernie. And he didn't get from Brother Ernie, he got it from the Lord. Right. And that's something that's that's thus saith the Lord in the form of letter. Right. So you gotta sometimes you gotta say say what the tape say, say what the bishop say, but then say what the pen says. <laughs> when, he wrote, right. when he wrote it right there. But we're not adding to it, just right. supplementing, so right. to speak, right? So the restoration of the bride tree is it's in three plus one, since four. And I think I stayed too long on that one too, sister. Restoration. The four stage process. Let's stand, please. Yeah, I said a little longer, but 38 minutes, somewhere. 37 minutes. God bless you this morning. Amen. Pray for me. I, I, I need it very, very badly. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm really enthused of our minister's meeting that we, we had yesterday. I see it as the first step. But I think the, the four of us here, Alice, I, Brother Stavis, Ernie, we've got to do a little bit of a, what we call that, like I mentioned, the word of retail evangelism, you know, with the ministers, the yeah. valley. It's, uh, yeah. it's very good that what was done statewide, but we need to work you know, in the local place. Okay. You know, and uh, we're very blessed for them to have done it two miles away mm -hmm. from here. I think they chose a, a neutral place, like I said yesterday. A neutral place. It's not in Phoenix. <laughs> it's not in uh, Mesa. It's neutral. There's nobody there. <laughs> 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 
Yes, sir. Uh, but like I told the brother, as soon as Juan Ken says, where you at, brother? brother I said, uh, brother, I work, I work a little country, a mission. Down the road. Just, just down the road about, uh, you know, we're, we're near the biggest <laughs> insane asylum, but the biggest insane asylum in Arizona. What's that? I go, they hit you. <laughs> and then the brother himself from Tucson he said, Man, we got the second largest <laughs> U of A. And then the other brother from, from uh, Flagstaff said, Well, we got the third. <laughs> oh, you you obey, right? So yeah. it's uh, something that, you know, something like that can catch on. Um, how did I know it was a driver school? I handed out two cards up, two cards up there just a little bit when yeah. I went up there. That's when, when we got here, a uh, black man was talking. And I felt you should give him something, talk to him, drive him over. Mm -hmm. And then he started walking away, and I was walking around, oh, man. Then I saw another guy show up, and I said, do you know him? And, no, I don't. Then I gave him a card. Then he's from, he's from Ohio. Black guy, huh? Said, yeah. So we talked a little bit about that. Wow. Mentioned him that about the large insane asylum here. He started laughing. And so we're, we have about 100,000 in our, in, our, in our campus, in Ohio State. Wow. I said, that is a big insane asylum, isn't it? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but God bless you, brother, brother, um, brother, brother Ernie, right? You're going to come up, brother, now? Come, come on up, brother Ernie, and uh, let's pray and ask God, God's forgiveness, forgiveness if I say anything out of order. And um, But I think the Lord is in everything. Ah. Remember one thing. Just remember one, one thought. If, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Yes. Yeah. If you can believe all things are possible. Amen. You know, that's the saying in the word right now. Um, let's bow our heads. If, if you need something from the Lord, raise your hand. I, I'm going to give a prescription right now. And I, I'd like for everybody here and mom to, to do that. I'd like for you all to read those four things that I was mentioned to the ministers yesterday. They helped me a lot because I, I went through and did the studies. But what is repentance? And in their subset, a subset in there is what is sin. The second one is how perfect is God's forgiveness? Yes. And the third is Christian baptism. The fourth is seven reasons why we should come to Jesus. If you're hearing that out there, just write to us, text us, call us, ask us for them, we'll send them to you. They helped me tremendously. Well, what do you think? Of, just, they helped me a lot. And I know they can help anybody. Above me, with me, or someone I can help. Please read them. They'll help you. Yes. They will help you. Yes. How sad to die at the doorstep of a doctor's office uh, yes. with the medicine in your hand because we are too stubborn, the man said, okay. too stubborn to take the medication. Uh, uh, that is stubbornness. Uh, Willing to die. Thank you. What we, who, whom, at whom are we met? At the doctor that prescribed the medication? As a pharmacist that gave us some medication. But what? Who, who, are we mad at somebody? Look at it as God's word. God's word came from yesterday we heard from a donkey. Did it daily. If God can speak through me, he can speak through any one of us. So I, I give that as homework to, to mom, the brothers and sisters here. Let's read them. Take it to heart. Put your put your name in there. Right. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that we heard today. Thank right. you for your admonition, Lord. God. And as you ask me to say, and I rarely say it, let him that has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit says unto the church. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for your word. Help us, Lord, as we may study more in, into restoration. Yes. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen.
us, Brother Ernie. How we amen, amen. Appreciate that message, that teaching this morning. Yes. Let's uh, let's let's worship now for a little bit. Yes. Thank the Lord, and uh, we'll we'll be singing nothing but the blood of Jesus, number one forty one, and I think it's also one forty eight. Glory, glory, the sun is free. 
that are living like you're not. My. Stop your lying. Amen. Let's just stop our lying. Stop Thank our pretending. You, stop that we don't have enough of God's love in us to love our brothers. Even the ones who think we think they stabbed us in the back. My. Especially the ones that yeah. did what we thought they shouldn't have done My. to us or anybody else. Yes. Let's just stop our lying that we can't love them. It will make you stop your life. It will save you when you're dying. It will start the devil flying at you. Building up for me. Oh, give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Oh, it's so good I want. thanksgiving for the word of God for the teacher Lord. yes Lord man I'm telling you Lord Jesus help us Lord Jesus yes. Yes. to make the time to read those of repentance and yes. baptism yes. and those other things that brother Ernie has brought to us Lord Jesus have help us to get them off our desk to be able to read them yes. out of our bookcases Lord Jesus yes. help us to do this one on one evangelism Lord Jesus we need it Starting with our families, starting with ourselves, Lord Jesus, yeah. as we were taught this morning. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to and bless us, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We bless you for everything, and we bless you for tonight's service also. Our brother Esteban, as he preaches tonight also, Lord Jesus. We thank you and dismiss us in peace, and we thank you in Jesus' name and pray. Amen. We'll give you the honor and glory. Amen. Thank you, brother. Take the name of Jesus with you. Amen. As you dismiss and remember service tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, doors open at 5 30, yes? Yes. Yeah. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy conquer you.